Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome once again to the purple website. It is me. Your favorite is Dan. Actually, I can't claim that for sure, but it is my aim to at least try to break the top five one of these days. How are we all feeling? <laughs> I know it's so soon after the last one. I'm excited too. I can just do this now with a click of a button. Well, several, several clicks of several buttons. I can just do this. It's kind of nice. So what we're doing here, I don't know if everyone knows what the longship is. I would understand if you didn't. Uh, a friend of mine, Will Overgard, over on his channel, Viking Blonde, has been streaming for years and is a lovely fellow. And I'm going to be joining him today in a little less than an hour for some shenanigans. A game I've never played, but anytime Will has an idea for a game that he says, we should play this, it is guaranteed to be weird and funny in a good time. So I thought, hey, let's just, let's just like hang out for a little bit and chat. And then when it's getting around time to start, I'll hit that raid button and we'll all go over there together, which feels thematically appropriate given his branding. I guess we do call it shadanigans when it's at least two or more Dans. I suppose we can still qualify it as shadanigans if it's a Dan and a Will. Shadana Williggins. Two Danzas, Shadanzigans. I like it. That's a good variant to our terminology. <laughs> ah, this is nice and relaxing. I appreciate how much y'all are really thinking through the the terminology for what shenanigans should be with varying numbers of Dan's involved. <laughs> On today's menu. Well, I don't like. I would say what the game is we'll be playing, but I don't know if he's said. So I don't want to give away any surprises. A wrong. I'm thinking like we should do a wrong play stream next week sometime. I'd say Monday, but I need to record Derman stuff for Playframe, so maybe like potentially Tuesday or Wednesday. We should do a uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus wrong play stream just to try it out. I'm curious to see how a wrong play stream will go. It should be fun. <laughs> if we do something with Gam, it'll be Shadana Gams. Pretty good. I like it. Ah, you can't subscribe to our channel until we are at least affiliate, is my understanding. Possibly partner, but I feel like affiliate. Which we'll hopefully get there. We've already met several other requirements. I just need to do a total of, what, seven streams? and stream for a total of eight hours. Yeah, can't even throw bits. It's a little baby channel with a just slightly irregular number of people for that level of newness. In some ways, it's kind of nice because it's kind of easing me into running these things. It's less stuff for me to be keeping track of and managing at a time. So I have to do those requirements within like 30 days, which should not be a problem. Really, it's just like, I think the only challenge for us for affiliate or maybe eventually partner is just the number of streams, given how busy I am. 
But maybe if we just do like regular, reasonably lengthed ones, we can make it happen. Our friends, our play friends from other servers and not members of the Dantalus Theater Company allowed to join us for instances in 14? Certainly. I mean, yeah, it'll be a little harder for you to... It will be harder for you to get involved given usually the way people join me for like dungeons and stuff when I'm doing a Dermon run is just... Uh, I just, I happen to be on as Dermon and recording and I don't really announce it. And then as soon as like I'm to a dungeon or trial, I just say, hey, who wants to join? Uh, and I say that in our free company chat. So not being in our free company definitely sets you at a disadvantage for joining uh, the average dungeon or trial. But uh, whenever we do a raid, those tend to be far more uh, coordinated. So if you want to get in on that, because those are usually planned much further in advance, uh, you can join our Discord. Well, I say our. It's an unofficial Discord, but it's better than one that I would run. Here, I even set up a little button that hopefully works. Boom. With a link to the uh, Play Friends Discord, where all of the Dantalus Theater Company folks <laughs> all coordinate and communicate. Are we going to have carry streams? Maybe. I don't know if there is any plans immediately. Nor do I know if we've gotten ourselves all set up for easy two-person, like, microphone set up for streaming. I'll have to fiddle around with that a bit. Also, I think she might still be asleep. But I'm having coffee, so she's here with us in beverage spirit. I do recommend that Discord, by the way. It's, it is not an official play friends, play for, er, it's not an official play frame Discord, because Carrie and I are not running it, we are not in charge of it, but we do heartily endorse it because the folks there are lovely, they run it very well. Um, and it tends to be where all of our like community folks coordinate for things. The Dan Hunters, uh, whenever Dan and I are playing Dark Souls games, they are all in communication there. Uh, the Our free company in Final Fantasy XIV is all there. Uh, they're a good bunch. So if you enjoy the vibe of our channel and the vibe of the like comments and community around our channel, I heartily recommend it. I'm happy to be a little member there. It's good folks. <laughs> Welcome, Yen. And Kurtrip, I enjoy seeing so many familiar names. This is fun. Are you going to go back to Dark Souls 3 or are you going to go straight to Elden Ring? Oh no, Dark Souls 3 for sure. In fact, Dan and I have recorded a session of it. It should... Uh, next... Wait, hang on. What's the day? <laughs> Streaming is so... It's Thursday, right. All right, so I don't think uh, the first episode... No, the first episode won't be this Saturday. It'll be next. That's when Dark Souls 3 will return. And it will be something. Because I don't know if how many of y'all have gone back to Dark Souls 3 since playing Elden Ring, but the buttons are different, and there's a lot of Elden Ring controls and features and stuff that I like that aren't in Dark Souls 3. So you will spend a lot of time clicking in the left stick trying to go into stealth, or pressing A or X to jump. Dan and I both had a little bit of difficulty with that. Me especially, because I just literally, less than 24 hours before, recorded a bunch of Elden Ring for the channel and then had to jump into Dark Souls 3. <laughs> so I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between the two and it's going to be a nightmare. We did okay though, considering. Yeah, I think the robot hello is definitely a deep cut, but I have no problem with it continuing. When we're allowed to have emotes, I think Robot Hello should definitely be one of them. There might be carry streams, possibly. Nothing is planned. Everything is winged. <laughs> and we're all just hanging in there together. Oh, enjoy the Elden Ring videos. That'll be plenty of content to keep you going for a good long time. I didn't set out to create the one piece of Let's Plays, but it's kind of what it's slowly turning into. 
Oh, are we ever going to see Joriel's Island Sanctuary? You know, I hadn't thought about it, but sure. Like, I, I don't see any reason why not to just stream me goofing around in 14, not doing anything all that much. I think whenever I'm going through story stuff, I enjoy doing that just like as a me and Carrie thing, because that's a thing we've both in, been enjoying together. But if I'm just like doing various grinds, side quests, stuff like that, island crafting, whatever else, that could be fun to just stream and hang out. So I haven't actually read One Piece because I don't... I assume some people have ingested all of the One Piece there is, but it sounds impossible when I hear them describe it. Will there be a Elden Ring lore retrospective eventually? Now, I don't think so, in part because I like I make way more things now than I did back when I made those Dark Souls lore retrospectives. I just don't have, I honestly don't have time for all the things I am doing. <laughs> I am, I enjoy dabbling in things too much and it's very fun. Like even this streaming is great fun and I'm enjoying dabbling, but like I could probably get a lot more New Frame Plus done if I wasn't having fun doing tons of other stuff <laughs> and going full-time would help some with that but I'm sure I just I tend to fill my time with lots of interests I'm enjoying this though no regrets also I get the feeling like the scale of the of Elden Ring is just so large I don't trust my ability to fully I, I feel like the the full-time Elden Ring lore masters will uh, <laughs> do a better job, you know? Flame and Air, I don't entirely understand how I manage all the things I do either. Arguably, I don't manage all the things I do. Again, like some things, I don't like how long it takes New Frame Plus episodes to come out. I am going to be, uh, now that the Final Fantasy IV, like, beast is completely done and out, and I'm very happy with it, I want to try making some shorter, like, it was interesting releasing the wrong play videos on Playframe and seeing the response to it, because folks loved it, which I'm thrilled about, but some folks were clearly kind of, like, going into it and, uh, like, kind of expected, thought that they were getting more of a new frame plus thing that was just not edited enough. Which was interesting to me because like that wrong play stuff, I could throw that together super quick. And it made me wonder, maybe I should start trying to figure out like some more quick, short, hasty new frame plus type things I can make in between those big, chonky, heavily researched, heavily edited things. Cause it'd be like, uh, I could potentially make them a lot faster. And it'd be nice to be able to release some smaller stuff in between. So I think I want to try to do one or two of those before the next big New Frame Plus video. I need to record another playthrough of Final Fantasy V before I even get working on that one, frankly. And I got a Zelda video I want to do. I do, so like, busy as I am, I have tried, endeavored to keep sort of like a one day of the week as a full chill day. Like usually on Sunday, about the only work I'm doing is just uploading the next week's Playframe stuff and getting that all set up to release where it's supposed to. And then I like, on Sunday, I pretty much just dedicate the rest of that day to probably just playing Final Fantasy XIV, maybe some other game, but just entirely chilling. It takes a lot of discipline to actually keep that day clear, because otherwise I would fill it. There's just too many darn things I want to make and do, and they're fun, is the problem. Do you ever think some of your animation reflections could translate to a book, or is that just not in the cards? 
I don't really have any intent to do a book. Honestly, like, there are certain things that books are good for when it comes to, like, animation, uh, education, and teaching. Especially with 2D work, like, getting to see the drawing. Like, the Animator Survival Kit being a book makes complete sense. Although I think they did also release a more, like, video equivalent of that at some point. I didn't check it out. But, um, one of the things with animation is that it's the study of movement, so, like, stuff in books can't move. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I think video format is just better for what New Frame Plus is trying to teach. Have you always been the type to fill your time constantly, or did that evolve as you got older? That's happened more as I got older. And it's been kind of a slow thing that... I don't really know exactly how or why I did fall into this, but... I guess the first thing was, like... As soon as extra credits went from just being some random videos that I made from time to time to a thing that we were gonna do weekly on The Escapist, that lined up and started at the exact same time as I got my first, like, full-time animation day job gig. So I have always, always been doing both simultaneously day job animating, doing something on YouTube or the internet in my off hours. And like, that's just continued. And as more opportunities to make things in the off hours have popped up, I keep on wanting to do them and trying to find room to squeeze them in. And the problem is now, a decade in, or so in, I've, uh, <laughs> not 12 years in now, I have found so many things that I enjoy doing and want to do. And I've worked very hard to try to like efficiently squeeze them all in to like a routine that I can keep up with. I don't always manage it. I just enjoy, I enjoy doing all this stuff. I'd be sad if I couldn't do all this stuff. On one hand, yeah, I'd have way more free time to just chill and catch up on TV shows and movies and play more games. But I mean, I feel pretty lucky to get to be able to do this and have people actually want to see it. And I enjoy, like, it's really satisfying making something and seeing a lot of people enjoy it. So, I don't know. I enjoy getting to do it. Now, I'm not familiar, uh, Brave Othello, with the current iteration of The Escapist. I have not, like, I've not really kept up. Not really ever since, uh, like, leaving it and a lot of the other folks, uh, who I was watching over there also leaving it. And then it kind of became a Gamergate hangout for a while, and I was definitely not going there then. It's not that anymore, as I understand it. I think it got a good bit of a reboot. I hear it's better now, <laughs> which is good. I'm thrilled about that. But yeah, I still, I still don't really keep up. Ah, coffee good. What's my favorite video I've made? Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. I feel pretty, like, I think the, I think the Sonic video, yeah, I think the Sonic video has got to be the one. I'm proud of a lot of the videos I've made on New Frame Plus. Like I, I know that how to be a game, how to become a game animator one gets a lot of play in schools and and uh, gets shared around by industry folk from time to time, and that makes me thrilled. But yeah, that Sonic video was the hardest video I've ever made. Uh, the longest one, the uh, the longest like highly edited video that's not just sort of like a let's play type thing, and. Uh, Easily the most popular I've ever made, too. Like, by far. On any... For any channel. I don't think... You know, I don't know how the... Like, the Pokemon video that I've got kind of planned, which will someday... I have no idea when it'll come out. The nice thing is that I expect it's a kind of evergreen topic, but... I don't know if the Pokemon video will top it. There is... Something about Sonic and, like, discussing the quality, the relative quality of Sonic games that just bring, that gets a lot of people's interest fast. I think because Sonic has so much unevenness to its quality that it's all over the place and it's a fun story, no matter what angle you come at it from, right? 
But then again, Pokemon animation is a sometimes contentious topic, which I'm sure will draw in a lot of people too. Who knows? Yeah, no, I aim to play at least a little bit of all the Pokemon games, enough to get footage from all of them uh, that I need to make that video. So we did a little bit of that yesterday. Now there's just, what, 40-something more to go? Oof. It's, it's basically, I talked about it a little bit on stream yesterday, but the video I'm planning to do for a Pokemon video is just explaining why they are the way they are. I see a lot of people, uh, like, every time the conversation comes up of, like, why do Pokemon games not look as AAA as all these other ones? Why are they, like, well, anytime someone says Pokemon games should be, like, they should be given Game Freak more time to make these, they should be throwing more budget at it, staffing up, just, like, all these various things. I want to make a video that I makes an attempt to explaining the reasoning behind that, uh, why they are the way they are. Which is not to say that it is satisfying reasoning. It's not going to be answers people are happy with, but, like, there are answers to the questions of why they have, they keep doing the thing they do. But to make that video, you need footage from a lot of Pokemon games, which is going to take a while. Yeah, no, it's like, they are large scope games, and they've done a pretty darned impressive job at keeping scope manageable with their approach. Yeah, Mother's Basement actually made a great video about that topic, and that was kind of like, that kind of in part inspired the thought of me wanting to make a, a video getting a little bit more into that. I, I don't think I'm going to get into all of the spinoff games. I think, especially when it comes to series like Ranger and Mystery Dungeon, maybe I'll dip into, like, one from each one of those sub-series a little bit. Sometimes it's useful to have those spinoffs as, like, a frame of reference when comparing it to the core games. I won't get too far into them, but I do want to, like, dip my toe in just to get a sense for everything that's been coming out. Yeah, no, it's really, like, the the consistency of their releases is in part, I think, a big part of their, of the success they're enjoying. And it's something that, uh, it's something that's changing to a, like, that giving them, the studio more time in between releases and stuff like that, it would, uh, potentially disrupt that very successful multimedia release, uh, strategy they're, they're doing. I think Inscription would be a lot of fun. Do I have any insights on the National Dex Sword and Shield stuff? Oh, Carrie's awake. <laughs> yeah, I talked about it a little bit yesterday, but uh, the National Dex was a mistake from the start. They should never have done it, and I'm glad it's gone. That's a much more, like, brusque way of saying it <laughs> than, like, I don't mean it to sound mean. I know for a lot of people, it is, you're not, like, if you're somebody who likes the National Dex and who has always been someone who, like, really enjoyed getting, like, the full, complete living Pokedex in a game, like, you're not wrong to enjoy that. And that's, that is, there's a legit appeal to that. But it's been something that's made, that has been just this huge weight and, like, that the franchise has changed to. It significantly limits what they can do with each individual game. And uh, it's something they... Should, it was a bad idea from the start that they should have bailed on a decade ago. It And the thing is, it was going to happen. Like, there is literally no way that they were ever going to... Like, that they were going to keep this going forever. It's just not sustainable. And, like... For all, like, for all the many folks, myself included, who would love to see a bit, uh, like, a higher budget, bigger production, more AAA Pokemon game happen someday, that would never happen if the National Dex stayed. So, like, maybe that will happen someday, but not if the National Dex continued. <laughs> it's just not feasible. Will any of your messages ever get read by Dan? Maybe someday. Keep the dream alive.
I did look at Tim Tim a little bit, but it was pretty it was pretty early on. I think it I can't remember if it was even out of early access when I looked at it. I should glance at it again. And it was seen fine. Like it seemed like a fine, uh, much smaller budget production of uh, like a Pokemon like type game. Scarlet Knight, I have no idea what to advise you for uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, just in part because it's hard to tell exactly like what, they're definitely doing some new things with that one and I'm very curious to see. I'm excited to see it as well. If there's room for it on Playframe, I'd love to do another, like I'd love to do a playthrough of it if we're not in the middle of a bunch of other things and assuming Elden Ring ever ends. I understand it does. They tell me there's an ending, several. I'm starting to wonder if they're lying to me though. Am I thinking of recording a playthrough of the new Zelda? Probably not. I would be 100% down to stream some of it, though. Like, Breath of the Wild seems way better like as a stream game than a Let's Play game, but maybe? I don't know. I don't know. We haven't done ever- we have never done a Zelda on the channel, and that seems like an oversight. But maybe one of the huge open world ones is not the place to start there. I feel like a Wind Waker would be fun. Or like the Link's Awakening remake or something like that. I guess we did the randomizer. That kind of counts, sort of. Kind of. I don't think I ever played Phantom Hourglass. Yeah, how does everyone feel about that um, Breath of the Wild 2 trailer? Or, no, wait, what's it called? Tears of the... Tears of the... Kingdom? Is that the one? Tears of the Kingdom? That's it. Tears of the Kingdom. I'm excited. And I'm increasingly feeling certain that they are... That that game's coming out on whatever the next Nintendo hardware is. Like, it might, it, maybe it'll also release on the Switch in the way that a lot of Zelda games have been kind of, like, released on two generations at once. But part of me wonders if the fact that they... that information just keeps trickling out about it is because, like, they're just kind of waiting to announce new hardware and then they can start getting into it more. It seems suspiciously graphically, like, impressive for something that's meant to come out on Switch hardware. That's not to say it's impossible. I'm just skeptical. I know they're getting help from the Xeno, uh, Xenoblade 3 folks who have also done some really impressive open world stuff on the Switch, but still. I, like, I'm, gonna, I'm making the call. I'm probably wrong, but I'm making the call. The next Nintendo hardware, even if it's just like a Switch Pro or some other type thing, we are going to... That's going to get revealed before... Tears of the Kingdom's launch. And Tears of the Kingdom will be a launched or a near launch title for it, is my guess. Or it'll be available on it, even if Tears of the Kingdom comes out first on Switch and then the hardware comes out later. Tears of the Kingdom's definitely coming out on that thing. The Switch has been great. I really hope that, like, the next hardware also is just very similar to the Switch. A, a slightly more powerful Switch is really all I want because the Switch has been phenomenal. Yeah, hardware advertising in under six months might be a bit fast. Then again, now that I think about it, I don't know, like, I don't know how long Nintendo usually takes to between like announcing new hardware and new hardware dropping. Yeah, I, I'm expecting the sh chip shortages and pandemic stuff has probably, is probably the reason we've not heard about new Nintendo hardware yet. I'm guessing we'd have seen something happen within the last couple of years, if it not for that. I am guessing the, whatever the name of the new hardware is, it will, the name will be bad. Because it seems they kind of alternate on that front, right? 
Actually, they don't even alternate. It's just usually the names are bad. The Switch is kind of an outlier. The Wii is not a great name. The Wii U is a worse name. The new 3DS, remember that one? Wow. Terrible. DS was alright. Game Boy was very good. And like Nintendo 64, that's fine. GameCube, solid. Yeah, I guess it's true. Like, the, the old ones, like the Nintendo Entertainment System and Super Nintendo Entertainment System, like, they felt fine at the time. In retrospect, if something like that came out now, that would be just baffling. <laughs> the Entertainment System. Super Nintendo does just, like, roll off the tongue really nicely, though. That's got a nice feel to it. And Famicom's also very good, even though that's not like the one we got. <laughs> like Famicom. Charming. You know, I bet the Wii would have landed a lot better if they hadn't announced it under a code name before. Because like, Having it called the Nintendo Revolution for a while. And then when they finally unveiled the thing saying, and guess what? We're calling it the Nintendo Wii. It's very deflating. <laughs> All right, I'll give them, we would like to play like that. A lot of their branding work around the Wii. Mwah. Awesome, great. It was just a very, it was a hard left turn. And it clearly worked for them. The console did pretty well, as I understand. Yeah, I do wonder if, like, the, the market that the Wii cornered probably wouldn't have been, like, there is something about the Wii that does, like, stick. It catches in your mind. You remember it. And it has kind of, like, a playful charm to it that Revolution simply does not. Oh, yeah, Nintendo 64 did have, like, the project named Dolphin, which is very interesting. Or was that the GameCube? I forget which. It was GameCube. Okay, okay. And, of the, yep, and that, that would be why the emulator is called that, of course. Makes a lot of sense. I will give him, I will give him that the Charles like that a lot of their brand branding work as in like we as in everyone we as in fun W plus I plus I for the controllers and I and I for two people and we being like an original name and word that works in every language with every like it can be pronounced and said and written in every like clearly they thought real hard about it and it's there is 
on paper in that way, it works so extremely well. But then, like, it's something that, like, works so much better on paper, it still feels sort of silly and like, okay. <laughs> uh, in practice, or at least in English, maybe less so elsewhere. But yeah, I will give him points. It's like... It worked, like, it worked very well. And it is very catchy as a name. And the Mies, like, now we have Mies forever, and that's great. Mies are good. Xbox naming has also got its issues. <laughs> I really appreciate Sony's simplicity. PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boom. Maybe there's a pro thrown in there or something. But you know what you're getting. Boring? Yes. But nice and simple. Yeah, I do remember back when we all thought it was going to be the Xbox 720, which probably, like, wouldn't have been a great name either. Better than the Xbox One, though. That, I'm still a little upset about that one. X2 box. If, maybe if they start really leaning into it and owning it as a comedy bit, then, we, then we'll all come around on it. Carrie's here, by the way. Hmm. We're getting nearer and nearer to that long ship time. Not quite there. There will be some silliness. Do a playthrough of Tunic on the channel? I would be game for that. I loved Tunic and I want to finish it. There have been a lot, like, pretty much all of the one off Wednesday games uh, are games that I like. I played that first episode and lots of them I wanted to continue, but I intentionally didn't just in case uh, we got an opening later to come back and play it, uh, play the rest of it on the channel. Because especially with something like Tunic, really, like, you've got that first time experience of it. And then you'll have no then you'll know a lot of the puzzles, right? I wouldn't be surprised if one of those like next time we hit a patron uh bonus playthrough goal, if one of those if one of those uh one off games gets picked as a game to come back to and finish. Yeah, Cult of the Lamb, I guess, got two one offs. We should do some of that. Like, maybe next week, if there's time for additional streams. Cult of the Lamb would be fun. I'm glad you're liking the music. It's pretty much all stuff from uh, Twin or Tiny Waves and Game Chops. Those are two just sort of uh, labels that release, like, game cover type music. And they've both got some lo-fi albums with the game remix stuff. Game Chops especially has a bunch of them. Uh, I've got links down in the kind of about section of our channel where you can go and check their sites out and... I highly recommend doing so. There's a lot of good stuff there. We actually did already do a one-off of Tunic, and it was great. But that's also one, like... I would be game for finishing that one on YouTube, uh, as of just as a regular Let's Play, instead of as a stream. But yeah, I think there's lots of them where... If we decide not to continue them on YouTube, we'll just, like, finishing them on stream makes a lot of sense. Oh, there is a playlist for the Wednesday episodes. Uh, go to, if you go to Playframe and just look for Playframe one-offs, uh, 
there's a big playlist that has basically every game that we've only done one episode of. They're all in there. It's a bunch of them. Would you play more free games like Grimm's Hollow and stuff like that? I do play some free games. It's, I mean, they just, they just have to interest me or I have to have heard of them. <laughs> and I don't know if I've heard of Grimm's Hollow. It's vaguely familiar. What are we doing today? Well, in a short little while here, in 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to go raid Will Overguard because I'm going to be joining him for some silliness this afternoon. I figured we'd just hang out and chat a bit here first before taking the party over to his channel. Would I consider a Persona 5 Royal playthrough on Twitch since it's coming out on PC soon? I would consider that for Twitch more than for YouTube, probably, just from sheer length. But even then, <laughs> they're just so long. Yeah, like, on the one hand, Elden Ring is definitely, like, a very long one, and we'd, like, it's been a long playthrough, but it's also, it's a side quest run, and people are definitely interested in it, but, like, it's a long time to have one game dominating the channel. So, like, I, it's been fun to do with Elden Ring. I'm kind of thinking maybe it would not be a great uh, practice to do very often. It is kind of like your pink texting in real life. <laughs> How's that comment section uh, in the Elden Ring playthrough been, by the way? Generally good. I do not read it as closely as I used to. Uh, I'll be honest. Like, I do enough to moderate it. But, uh, in part, some people were getting a little bit, like, free-flowing with spoilery type stuff. There's a lot of backseating. Uh, and, uh, occasional bit of condescension. <laughs> Also, there are lots of people giving wrong advice, <laughs> which was like that. I think that's what kind of made me start not paying quite as close attention to it. There are lots of people coming in, giving incorrect advice or incorrect information, and then other people would come in and argue with them, and then there'd be all back and forth, and I wouldn't know who was right. And so I started trusting the information I was getting just slightly less. <laughs> It has still been helpful for some stuff, for sure. Like, if I miss something big, like some character interaction or something that I can go back for, uh, for that, the comments have been very helpful. I'm very glad folks are still enjoying it, though. Kitties are doing good. Snoozing. Oh yeah, still upstairs snoozing. Is Final Fantasy XIV a permanent game on the channel, considering it's a game with expansions coming out on a regular basis? Uh, in some ways, I guess kind of, but at a certain point we will catch up to current, and then I think it'll just be something that's a little bit more sporadic. I don't know if... Whenever we do catch up to current, which is a good ways off, uh, I don't know if it'll be a thing where I'm doing German episodes about new patch releases instantly as soon as they drop. I think trying to do, like if a new expansion came out, I think trying to record German runs of that in the thick of a first, the first week of an expansion would be chaos and just too difficult. <laughs> and there will probably be some good, like I will be taking some long pauses now and then uh, when there's good stopping points in the, in the uh, Derman stuff, just because I need to, because it's, it's extra work, <laughs> uh, recording and editing and releasing all those things. So I, uh, every now and then I need breaks. You know, so I what originally I was not planning to do the Hildebrand stuff with Derman, but a uh, thing has come up 
that has that has me reconsidering it. But I don't know when that will happen, but it is a thing that is being considered. As kind of just a bonus bit. They're, they're somewhat long and completely irrelevant to the main story in every way. <laughs> so far. So far. <laughs> but they're fun goofs. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that, but it's something that, it's something that may happen. I don't know when. I'm very glad folks are enjoying the playthrough, including folks who are not playing 14. Like, given a lot of the comments and discussion I see, it seems like most of the people watching are people who already are playing 14 or, and are just enjoying the nostalgia trip going back through it. But uh, I am very happy that for some folks who are just like, I'm, I, I can't do this game, but I'm enjoying getting to see the story. That's good. That's exactly why. <laughs> that's exactly why I'm doing it. Yeah, and Carrie's kind of just a regular viewer of it now, too. Which means he can't stop. It's true. I won't let him. <laughs> I mean, not stop forever. He can stop, like, temporarily. Breaks are good. Sure. But you have to play the game. I have to sing it. Yeah. We'll do it. Don't worry. It's just too fun. I've, I've enjoyed the Dermot stuff a lot. And it's been, like, easily the most community involvement in anything, in any series we've ever recorded it's been a very special event even if it's like they're not they're like the view count on final fantasy 14 stuff has trailed off a good bit and that's but that's fine like it's fun to do still lots of folks are still enjoying it i think the more of it we record the more the more viewers are gonna start kind of getting drawn in that kind of happened with kingdom hearts stuff like all the kingdom hearts videos we were doing early on in playframe the view counts for them were kind of eh, so-so compared to everything else. But the closer we got to having gotten through all the Kingdom Hearts, the more people started showing up. So I wouldn't be surprised. Are you sure they're not just showing up for the Donald? They might also be showing up for Donald sometimes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to play Monster Hunter Rise on the channel? Not on Playframe, but I do need to play some of it just to see, like, I need to get far enough to be able to see Sunbreak stuff for animation, so I need to play some Monster Hunter, so I'll probably do it here. I don't know when, but, uh, given I have plenty of, uh, <laughs> given I have plenty of Monster Hunter playing friends, I'm sure if I hop in and start playing Monster Hunter, I can get some of them to zoom me through missions. my favorite 14 fight. Hmm. That trial from the latest patch is pretty rad. I don't know if it's my favorite, but I love how chaotic it is. I like the Sophia fight in the Warring Triad. Honestly, like a lot of the trials have all just gotten so good. Hildebrand will probably get a passing mention in the animation of 14 video. I'm actually, I I enjoy the way how goofy they are with animation and how much they push expressions and stuff in Hildebrand. I actually think that there are places that they push things a little too far in the main campaign on places because there's a lot of very naturalistic acting generally in 14. So when a character suddenly pulls a very cartoony face, I think it is like off model doesn't feel like the right term but it feels like it, they are pushing aesthetically too far into a different realm that doesn't feel quite right for what they're usually doing but on the whole like 14's animation is really strong especially considering the scale of what they're having to do The long ship hour draws near.
favorite coffee? I'm very boring. I just get like a medium roast that I'm content with and just have it just like black with nothing in it. <laughs> Will Dermot be doing any of the raids? No, Dermot has been doing all of the raids and will continue doing so because they keep on making them story relevant later. <laughs> and I'm kind of just assuming they're going to keep doing so. So might as well. They're also all fun. Savage raids, no. <laughs> yeah, higher difficulty fights that are just the same fights but harder. Like, if it doesn't have any story relevance, then nah, I'm not not doing the Durban stuff for combat challenge. I would honestly still be doing all the raids unsynced if it, like, didn't mean we were skipping, like, a lot of fun music and fun uh, phase changes in the fight and all that other stuff. It makes them a lot more of an ordeal to record, but... It's fun stuff to see. Hmm. All right. We're getting pretty close here to invasion time. And I should probably start setting up so that I can, uh, join Will's little, like, uh, <laughs> audio correctly. So, yeah, we, we need to figure out what our, like, raid cry is. We didn't really... I kind of just threw you all into it last time. What's our whole, like, what do we say when we raid people? What do we do? Do we honk? Yeah. Honking is definitely a thing. And eventually I could probably get you all like a honk emote as well. Honking kind of feels right. It's something that the play friend community sort of embraced on their own and it feels correct. A robot hello would also be a good one. Hello. Two solid options. We'll need emotes for both, for sure. Hello. <laughs> well, here, let's see if this time, the bu this time the buttons aren't all grayed out and stuff, so maybe I can just do it the way it should work. Why am I saying Viking Blonde twice? Whatever. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go see you do the same. Back. Okay, thank you for joining. Yeah. <laughs> We've had our coffee. <laughs> uh, all right. Raid will be commencing shortly. In T minus five seconds. Go say hi. And I'll see you all over there shortly. <laughs> <laughs> 